Hello Hello there. there. Kyle Katarn here. And the Bendu. Reacting to Star Wars Visions Season 2. That's right. This has been an amazing journey brought to you and edited by Nerd Chronic to get it past the uh, Disney blockade. He's the only one. Uh, he's the only one that can do it. Yes, only smuggler that can make that run in less than twelve parsecs. It's true, it's his legendary. But yeah, so so this next one um, is called Owl's Song, which you know, just so for you, you said repeatedly that uh, Tatooine Rhapsody is was one of your initial favorites from season one. And I think this one it really was. This one, I think, kind of will be the the echo of that, just because like the description is. Uh, a child who longs to sing must stay quiet because her voice can cause great calamity in the mines. First of all, in don't be singing mind. in a mine. Echo, like things that echo, you don't want to be doing echoey shit underground and like make reverberation. Typically, yeah, you're going to cause a cave in, going to cause some activity yeah, or wake unless, up whatever lives. In yeah, there, unless you're you Duran's know? wife, unless you're Duran's wife. And in <laughs> any case, she was singing a song to try to appease the rocks. She was trying to sing. That was really cool. In Rings of Power, yeah, yeah. like the stone singing. I thought that was dope. Fucking I thought that gorgeous. was really cool. Interesting. This one is a mine, and the last one was also a mine. The pit was they were mining Kyber. And now we're presumably it's another Imperial controlled mine, but we don't know that yet. Yeah. I it Owl's song, it does sound like this could be like the counterpart to Tatooine Rhapsody, because it feels like every episode this season has had like a counterpart in the previous season. Not like sequels necessarily but yeah. like a, a spiritual successor like a vibes kind of sequel yes um but i'm not sure if it's going to be like an innately musical thing because Ao's song could also be referring to like her destiny the way din Djarin told bo katan like your song is not oh 100 it could be yeah the so it could be about her like her song her, her whole life it's true um, it's but true. the description talks about her voice so i think it probably will be directly like actually a song like music yeah yeah, these nine episodes have just been, again, phenomenal. They've, like, really just sped by. But, like, again, so binge-worthy. But, like, these stories are way more seemingly succulent than last season. Like, succulent. something succulent. something you said at our at the, at the last reaction is that, you know, these ones have more substance and, like, story to it. So it's, like, you really have to take your time with each episode this time around. Versus and last, that's not to say that the, that there weren't substantive episodes last season. Yeah, too. yeah, exactly. That too. It, it's just that every single episode feels like, I don't know, there's like, there's some heavy emotional content going on that like requires yes. a lot more focus necessarily. And it's, it, some of them have been lighthearted, but overall it feels much less lighthearted in tone than season than one. Than season one, exactly. Yes. And I think the red, the red visions logo was, was like the writing on the wall going into this, that this was going to be a darker a darker season of stories. And you know what? I'm, I'm loving I'm, it. Yeah. I really am. Yeah. Awesome. Are you ready, best friend? I am, best friend. For our final reaction to Visions Season 2. Do it! The world of Korba was once rich with force-attuned Kyber, the crystal at the heart of the Jedi lightsaber. It is true. The Kyber's power was praised throughout the stars until an ancient order of the Sith poisoned it, leaving it corrupt with the blood-red glow of the dark side. Fuck yes. Okay, nice. Over generations, Korba's people learned to mine the corrupted Kyber for the Jedi, who, through sta painstaking effort, could restore the crystals to their natural, harmonious state. That would make sense. I mean, if you could bleed a crystal, there's no reason why you can't... If Yeah, if, if Sith bleeding exists, then Force cleansing must also exist. Beautiful. Force. I love it already. It's very hobbity. Already very hobbity. Very willow. Is it stop motion? I can't tell. Sometimes it's CGI that emulates it. No, this is straight up stop motion, I think. <gasps> Beautiful. Looks like Batu, honestly. It reminds me of uh, actually where the Southern Air Temple is. Sweet. Look at that ship. You climbed all the way up there just to jump down? Girl. Well, she, she climbed all the way up there to hear the voices on the wind and commune with nature through her song. True. Uh, what a cozy little house. Fort security. She'll be here soon. <laughs> Aww. A little side shuffle. Gotta, gotta carry the teapot with two hands. I like the little ant trail. We saw that earlier, too. This new mine shop told some of the darkest red Kyber about the Okay, so it is another Kyber mine. It says blood. More corrupt than an old Jedi like me can purify.
Oh, she can hear the song of the Kyber, bro. Fuck yes. That's amazing, because normally a Jedi can hear their own Kyber crystal singing to them. Uh. Apologies, Kat. Ooh, he's burning his hands. I dig it. It's like toxic to touch it for too long. You've grown. And so curious. She's an amazing Jedi. Yeah, she has a cool design. Hmm. Ooh! They to you. <laughs> They're like dwarves. They're like Kyber dwarves. Thank you, Abbot. We are grateful for your labors. No thanks needed. Oh, there's the a lightsaber. Kyber is our calling. Dude, it's purple and gold. Oh my god, it's gorgeous. You know that to use your voice near the crystal is dangerous. Ooh, she made it burn him. Are they all these cat people, I wonder? Or like cat bear people? This is like Star Wars meets Postman Pat. We're like naughty. Aww. <laughs> it's so cute. Most, that was the most wholesome the hug squeeze. What a place to live. Also, this shot is incredible with the rotating road like that. that. Was, yeah. Is that a Mandalorian? Nice. No, I think that was a robot. That was a dude in a suit for sure. Nice, look at that arch. We've seen that arch before. It was in Macquarie's concept art for Tatooine, and then they used it on Jakku. Oh my god, it has eyes. It's a little parasite guy. What's calling to her now? The wind. The mountains call to her. Ah! What a jump. Jeez. Okay. <laughs> okay. And to think, the Sith used to come to this planet just to fuck with crystals. Oh, that was oh, such that a cool was an shot. Awesome it, was shot. Like, like, it was like a drone shot. Oh, it's like in Jedi Fallen Order when you walk onto the sliding part. You just start sliding. There's nothing you can do. <laughs> And she lost her helmet, so she doesn't even have a light source. Oh, come on, girl. If she if she sings down here with all the kyber, it's gonna do something really dangerous. We haven't even heard her like talk talk. We've only heard her sing. Look at that. Oh, that's so much red. That's so And much a little red. bit of purple too. There's some purples in there too, yeah. Or maybe that's just them being quiet. Yeah, they're all they're all sort of red and violet. This is so sweet. God, that's beautiful. Ow. Why did you interrupt her? Why did you interrupt her? Now you Yeah, just, now there's screams everywhere. You fucked up the ritual. You fucked up the ritual. Go, 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 go! Oh, shit. No! No, God, no! Just start climbing, Dad! Throw her the rope. Throw him the rope. No, nope, don't do it. Don't do it. Come on. Come on. Yes! Let's go! What? What? Holy shit, she got to the ground before them. <laughs> Are you able to run? It's okay, Abby. Gotta trust the song, bro. Trust the song. I wonder if this would have happened if he'd, if she hadn't been interrupted, though. Whoa. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> what? These visuals are amazing. Dude, I'm about to start tearing up. 
She purified all of it. She purified the Kaiba. Yeah, like all oh of it. Oh my god, dude. How? Your voice, Al. Because she Across sat and listened. thousands of stars I have traveled, never have I heard anything like it. And I can help you nurture it, but you would have to come with me. Oh, she's force sensitive? Oh. For sure. It's here. We cannot choose where our To be able to sing with that kind of a power? Definitely force sensitive. Answer. Consider it. I'll be leaving in a fortnight. That's a decent amount of time to consider it for. Also, I appreciate that she's kind of rocking the Cad Bane hat. Totally. Oh my god, that shot. Oh. Cloud porn. Mm. Ready. Mm -hmm. I am. Oh, that's the first time we heard her talk. She said her dad's name when he was clinging to. Oh, that's true, that's true. You're the first of our kind. To step out into the stars, Ow. I'm proud of you. I miss you, Abby. That's Bro, this one's gonna make me start to cry. This one's so like uplifting and optimistic and hopeful. Compare it to oh the God, to the girl in Street in Screechers Reach going with the the Force user at the end. Like, oh, that was awesome. That was just like touching that was and a good and ending. Wholesome. And the fact that her song was so pure that she was able to purify the entire set of Kyber. And now we're getting to listen to it again. Is it because of is it because of like her her level of power within the Force, or is it because of her her innocence? And therefore purity, you know? I think she I think it's just like like how Ezra is able to talk to animals. I think with her it's just or or Ollivan so if I were to use a Harry Potter reference, like how Ollivander or or the Wandsmiths, how like wands were wand able to talk to wood thing. and how wandsmiths were able to talk to like the cores of wands. Like it would totally make sense. Totally. Or the or the fucking the lightsaber smith in season one. Like like he was kinda yeah. able to li able to listen to the crystal, you know what I mean? So we've heard about this happening, but this is the first time that like, man, that was moving. Like that's it's like the force chose her to be a conduit for like force cleansing to like rebalance the Kyber, you know? That was that's yeah. So that one was moving. That one was really, really cool. And with that, we've watched all of season two of Star Wars Visions. Um, I think in terms of overall thoughts. I, I really liked it. I, I didn't dislike a single episode. I thought they were all bangers this time around. Yeah. Was awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. They were all like, <laughs> not necessarily all of them more dark, but there was definitely like an intensity and like a heaviness to the subject matter. And and like with the exception maybe of Ao's song, they all they all involved like a like a degree of tragedy as well. So like I th I think I think the the show has kind of grown up in a way. Which is a weird statement to make because it's not like it's one group of people making all of these episodes and it's like right? there's a storyline. But season one felt like its first foray into this idea and like it was a whole lot of proving we can do this and like reimagining it as that. Yes. And, yes. Th and this one, this I felt like the stories of this season were less about the reimagining of Star Wars and more about the messages you can tell through reimagining Star Wars. Through Star Wars, yeah. But like between our exactly. song. Between our song and the bandits of Golok, like we had two different uh, force sensitive kids, two force sensitive like little girls, which is fucking amazing. Like getting to to find their new masters and like you know kind of go off and learn learn what it is to to be their individual selves. But I don't know. There's something I don't know. I don't know. There's something different about Owl. I don't know if it's because they were made out of felt. So like everything about their their everything about it was, was cute. There was just something Everything more was like, Ghibli, like Studio Ghibli about it, and just like, yeah, I don't know. This one, I thought, this the, one I thought the environments me. in this one in particular were really, really, really good. Like the vistas, the, the the perspective shot of when she was in the ship at the end, watching the ground get further away. Like it looked really, really good. It was really convincing. Um, the little village on the side of the mountaintop, like uh, it looked so good. I want to know how much of it was, in fact, physical stop motion, and how much of it was like continued on in the distance in CGI. Because I'm yeah, sure that there's a point a, yeah, where, that, I was thinking, where that cuts yeah, off. Yeah, that you know? question. That's a good one. 
And the shot of them on the on the speeder heading into town, and like they were stationary, and the road was moving, and then the background was slowly getting closer. That was awesome. That was probably my favorite shot, actually. God, this whole season was so was so good. This whole season was so yeah. good. Oh, my I find God. it interesting how many common themes it had, considering that it was done by so many different separate studios. Like, so many of them seem to be about motherhood, and like. The bond between a mother and their child. But also and, kyber and, uh, crystals specifically. Kyber crystals came crystals, up a lot too. A lot of a lot of specifically the mining of crystals came up a lot. Yeah. The a lot of, of energetic dualities and the importance of needing of both sides and Yeah, yeah, yeah a lot of duality yeah. stuff, a lot of light and dark. You can't really have Star Wars stories without light and dark though. That's kinda Part of that is part of the opera. Wars. That is that is very much part of the opera. One hundred percent. It's one of the boxes you have to check if you're doing Star Wars. You know, is there a light and dark aspect? Even Andor, even yeah. Andor had its light and dark aspect. So it's like it's true. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. It did. It's it's all about that dichotomy. Yeah, yeah. And, and like, they're, they're, it's very fascinating to focus on people who think they're good guys who are actually bad guys. Bill Skarsgård. That just makes. Because that just makes Fucking that just makes the dichotomy even more complex, you yeah. know. Or even like Dedra Miro and Cyril, you know, they're definitely bad people. They definitely <laughs> they're horrible think they're good people. people. Yeah, what happens? They think that they're good people. That's the crazy well, part. Well, they're just like, citizens. And they're people just like that exist as in the citizens, too. But they're but they're they're like intrinsically like I don't know. It's like if you were to meet them on the street, him or his mom, you'd be like, yeah, you guys aren't good people. <laughs> like, you know, like that's just character. That's just character build. No, and and acting. That's just brilliant acting. I think. But yeah, no one out there is like I'm the bad guy. Everyone thinks that they are the good guy, and some of them are just misunderstood. But like that, and that's the uh, scary part is that there's people I like literally. The ISB, Mom Tarkin the commits ISB, atrocities. He doesn't think he's the bad guy. He the entire the ISB, like they're they're don't think they're the bad guys. They think that they're the heroes for bringing order, for rooting out like rebellion and, and outrage and stuff. They think they're they think uh, they're cleaning up the streets. They don't see it as murdering people, disappearing people. They think that they're cleaning up, even though they're literally you, torturing. Man, no people. one thinks they're the bad guy, even though especially they literally, the bad guy. Even though they literally torture people and they come up with new ways to torture people to like find out the and they, and but. The and right alongside those new methods of torture, they come up with new rationalizations and justifications for why it's okay to torture these people. So villainous. So villainous. Like that's, the, that's really the insidious part isn't the torture. It's the mind games behind the torture being like, this is okay. It's good, in fact. And here's why. And here's I'm allowed why. to torture this guy. Yeah. 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 I can torture you because of what you did. It doesn't have a reflection on me, even though I'm a torturer now. It's like, no. You can't divorce <laughs> yourself from the whole that's, process like that. That's, that's not exactly how it works. exactly it. That's exactly that's not it. how it works. God damn. But the ISB is never going to ask those questions. We just themselves. figured it out. We and just cracked. We just cracked it. Yeah. Well, cracked the code. Cracked the dichotomy code. Amazing. Well, we really hope you enjoyed our reactions to Star Wars Visions Episode Nine and Star Wars Visions Season Two in general, because this what is a really ride. Fun. What a fucking um, ride. Seriously. Oh. Though. Uh, let us know in a comment below what you think of this episode. Did you enjoy it? Did you hate it? Did you love it? Tell what do you thought comments. of the other episodes and the overarching? overarching themes as well oh the saber hill customizations too can we just talk like for a hot second of like i feel like i need like we saw so many cool and colorful hilts like even the one that we yes yeah, some of the sabers were gorgeous like, like she absolutely had, gorgeous we had like pinkish purple like fuchsia hilt with like metal accents like it almost looks like kyle like Katarn's gemstones hilt. around the pommel yeah it almost looked like kyle katarn's hilt but with like gold purple fuchsia coloring to it which Fucking totally wow. totally it was it was really nice i really liked the um the saber from sith in the very beginning with the yellow curved blade going one way and then a red curved blade going, going the, the other way, way. <sighs> yeah so so, so elven so, there were so They're many so cool saber elven. designs in this honestly yeah yeah no this was dead and i also really liked the uh like the cane gaffy stick staff that split in the middle i thought that was super creative we've never seen a blade do that before i feel like you have to be really careful splitting it and turning it on or you're gonna like cut your hands off <laughs> or just break your cane in general right like i guess it depends it's like on a, it's like an aido like an aido kind of discipline where it's all about unsheath kill and sheath again in a single fluid motion exactly like all of the skill probably goes into turning that thing on rather than using it as a weapon yeah because <laughs> it's so dangerous to just activate man yeah this was really really like cool. the way she did it she like 
she had to activate it by like going sideways like a glow stick but then like yeah i don't know she had to like twist and then as she pulled it apart yes. she also activated the blades yes yeah that's what happened it was a yeah 100 percent. fuck yes that's totally what it was fucking it was dope cool. it was dope. fucking cool well thanks for watching everyone Leave us, leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. Shout out to Nerd Chronic who edited this reaction for us down to, down to 10 minutes for fair use. If you want to watch the full-length version of it, it is available on our Patreon. There's a link in the description of the video to the Patreon page. Thanks again. And as always, may the Force be with you.